Hey guys, it's going to do the I am back with another video today. We are looking at the torture and murder of Kelly Ann Bates. Before we jump into this case, if you could like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, that would mean the world to me. This story centers around two people, Kelly Ann Bates and her boyfriend, the paedophile, monster, murderer, James Patterson Smith. Now it was reported by James himself that Kellyanne Smith had drowned in the bath accidentally during an argument. She inhaled too much water and he failed to resuscitate her. Kelly was just 17 years old at the time and nearly three years into their relationship. So do the maths there. But the fact of the matter was she hadn't accidentally drowned at all. She had endured three weeks of some of the most horrific torture you will probably ever hear in your life, and then was murdered. This was 1996. Now, years earlier, when Kelly was just 14 years of age, she revealed to her parents one day, I've got a boyfriend, Dave. So the parents didn't think anything of it, to be honest. We're not gonna come down on her and be like, no, you're not allowed to have a boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. So they gave her free reign, within reason, of course. However, it wasn't long before this free reign was tested. In fact, it didn't take long for all of a sudden, Kelly to be staying out overnight, claiming that she's at a friend's house, but of course her parents were incredibly suspicious. So suspicious, in fact, and so worried that they actually called the police. When Kelly finally returned, she said she was at her friend's house. I believe the friend was called Rachel, but the parents, they weren't buying it at all, and they became incredibly suspicious rightfully so, about this Dave character. Now, it took two whole years before Kelly actually introduced Dave to her parents, and this was, of course, because Dave wasn't Dave at all. It was James Patterson Smith, and Dave, or James, wasn't a 14, now 16-year-old boy. Instead, he was nearly 50 years old. He had been grooming Kelly since she was 14 years old. Now, once Kelly had hit 16 and could technically do what she liked, it was time to reveal in full the relationship. She informed them that she would be quitting education immediately and be moving in with Dave. Now, it's safe to say that both hearing this news that she's quitting education and moving in with Dave and meeting Dave, a.k.a. James, they were absolutely livid, disgusted, shocked. There was an interview years and years later with the mother of Kelly. Her name was Margaret, and she said the following about the meeting. Apparently, he walked in all smug and arrogant, and she just saw in the corner of her eye, in the kitchen, a kitchen knife on the table. And she said how she had this overwhelming urge to repeatedly stab him in the back. She says that that is the biggest regret of her life that she didn't, because had she have done so, her daughter would still be alive today. She says, you know, was it almost a sign, having that alien urge you know, she's not a murderer, she's not, she has never thought about killing anyone before, but all of a sudden she has this overwhelming urge to kill this man, because obviously he has been grooming her daughter for years. Was this a sign that she should have taken that man's life to preserve her daughter's life? That is what she believed in hindsight, but of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. But regardless, the man is a paedophile, the man has been grooming this girl, this innocent girl, since 14 years of age. Now, James, or Dave, claimed to be in his early 30s, which still makes no difference. The guy is still categorically a paedophile, but the reality was so much darker because Dave was actually older than Kelly's father at the time. Of course, the parents contacted both the police and social services to save their daughter, who was clearly brainwashed into living with this man, but because she's 16, legally, in the UK, she could do whatever she liked. The parents were left utterly powerless. Now, as soon as James had full control over Kelly, it was game over. As soon as she moved in, he controlled every single aspect of her life, including how much she could see 
her mother. And her mother said that every time she saw her, which was very, very scarcely, she could tell that she was changing as a person. She was becoming a shadow of her former happy, bubbly, energetic self. Margaret would also witness bruises and bite marks on Kelly's body and face when she saw her on those rare occasions. But Kelly would just put it down to, you know, oh, I walked into a door or I caught my arm on a, on a cabinet or, you know, things like that. Never disclosing the truth that, of course, these were caused by James. Her mother went to the police again after seeing these bruises, these bite marks, and of course coming to the correct conclusion in her mind that her daughter was being abused by her partner. But the police said she's 16, she can do what she wants. What you need to do is get her to go to a doctor and to document all of this abuse. However, you can't force her because technically she's 16, she can do what she wants, and she doesn't have to do anything she doesn't want to do, i.e report James. Margaret would constantly plead with Kelly to please, please leave James. He is no good for you. He is abusive. He is a paedophile. He is a piece of shit. She genuinely feared for her daughter's life. In November of 1995, she pled with her in person for the last time. Kelly told her mother that she would barely see her anymore from now. She was getting a job at a factory. But also Kelly was angered by her mother for daring to tell her what to do and to leave James. And that was it. Never again would Kelly see her mother or vice versa. She did call from time to time, but these were even scarcer than the previous visits and would eventually dry up completely. She blamed that on the fact that she was working this new job in the factory, not the reality that James was not allowing her to do so. And her mother even received a Mother's Day card from her daughter, but it was written entirely in James's handwriting, showing to Margaret he has 100% control over her daughter. And her daughter is pretty much lost at this point. Now we return to the start of the video. In April of 1996, James walks into a Manchester police station and he says that his girlfriend accidentally drowned during an argument. She inhaled water and died in the bath. He failed to resuscitate her. So police went along to see what happened and it's safe to say that that couldn't have been further from the truth. Police turned up to a horrific sight. Blood was absolutely everywhere. William Lawler, the home office pathologist, said the following when he analysed her body. In my career, I have examined almost 600 victims of homicide, but I have never come across injuries so extensive. 150 different injuries were found on her body. They included the following. Her eyes were gouged out and her eye sockets themselves had been stabbed. Her genitalia mutilated, as was her ears, nose and mouth. Her body was burned and scalded. Her knees had been smashed in. Her head partially scalped, stabbed and sliced all over. She had a fractured arm, crush injuries to both hands, wounds caused by a spade and pruning shears. The worst part about the eye gouging is that this wasn't done after death. The pathologist said not less than five days and not more than three weeks before her death. Police found traces of Kelly's blood in every single room of that house. She was dehydrated and heavily emaciated, implying that she was starved. She had lost 45 pounds in weight. And it has to be said, she went through some of the most horrific torture I have ever seen when researching for a video such as this. Turns out Smith had a very violent history against young women. He actually attempted to drown two of his exes, one of which was 15 years old. One of his exes coming forward to say he would beat her even when she was pregnant. During the trial, James actually went on to blame Kelly for the torture, saying that she would goad him into it, teasing him and taunting him about his dead mother. And apparently the reason why he gouged her fucking eyes out was because she dared him to do it. And so he obliged. The jury came back with a guilty verdict less than an hour after being sent away to make a decision. That is rapid and shows how horrific and how stacked the evidence was against this man. Every single member 
of that jury panel received psychological counselling because of what they had to witness when going through this trial. James was sentenced to 20 years to life imprisonment. So there we go guys, what do we think of that one? Very, very dark, horrific crime, horrific man and a tragic, tragic victim. Thank you so much for watching guys, I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to subscribe, like and share, I'd really appreciate that too. Thank you so much guys, I'll see you very soon. Sweet one, geese.